When you say the outback, it conjures images in the mind of red dirt and wide, dry, open plains dotted with lonely gums. And when you drive north 160 kilometres from Port Augusta to the middle of the Flinders Ranges, that's exactly what you get. Thankfully, there's also the welcome sight of the entrance to a top tourist park. Kate, how long have you been at the park? Um, I've been here now six years. OK. Um, you love it? Oh, absolutely. Let's face it, you, you are quite isolated. This is this is probably one of the more isolated caravan parks. Well, funny you say that, because I don't reckon we are isolated. OK. Because when you look at it, Hawker's 35 k's down the road with all facilities that you could possibly have. Yep. Port Augusta's an hour and a half. Well, how many sites do you have? Like, we, camping, camping sites first. All right. Um, powered sites, we have um, 60 powered sites. OK. We can't go any more than that, because we're the end of the power lines. Right. We, and um, unpowered, we have up to 50. There's no sadder noise than in the background someone to hammering in a tent peg. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. Oh, now they've stopped. Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on. <laughs> it's going to go again. Caravanners <laughs> love that noise. <laughs> You've got some great cabins. Yes, we've got four down by the creek. We have 29 holiday units, which is anything mm -hmm. from a one bedroom up to a three bedroom, and then we go up to our really smart. And these cabins. are the richy cabins. This is the really richy cabins, yeah. which are eight um, eco villas, which were all made of straw. Even though they're made of straw, they've all been wolf tested. <laughs> Is there a place to like go for dinner? Is there a pub here? We, or? On Ronsley Park, we have a, our own restaurant, yep. which is actually based back down the road. We're next to our holiday units. If you're looking at more of the bar style sort of things, people go to Will Paint a Pound or they'll go to Hawker. But you buy a drink, wouldn't you, and, and sit around a campfire rather than. Oh, know, exactly. It's, it's just absolutely. The, the, more of our caravanners actually tend to like to sit around the campfires. I've got kids. Yep. We need the internet. No. <laughs> no? We don't need the internet? No, yeah, we don't, yeah. Kate reckons, no. <laughs> no. And they try and bring the kids away from the internet. Oh, right. Because they think there's more out there to see mm. than, the, and kids, then they need the, than the kids sitting out on the internet. But you do have, like... We a, do have Wi-Fi th set through the, through the parks. Okay. A lot of people like it here because it's peaceful, quiet. It's beautiful. Get the view. <laughs> <laughs> Get the view. Hey, how beautiful is okay. that? But you can climb and walk through all of this, can't you? You can. There is a five-hour return walk from Rawnsley Park, um, just virtually up the hill here, mm -hmm. um, and it does give you a stunning view into the pound, and it does give you the could, view back to us. Could I do it? Like, looking at me, do you reckon I'm well, <laughs> too late? Let me do just... Oh, oh, we'll have to go and check the doctor's reports on well, that <laughs> If you are concerned the kids will be climbing the walls, without their high-tech gadgets, we'll relax, because the park has another bonus that comes absolutely free for guests. How many uh, sheep are, are run on the property? Well, we can only run about 2,000 sheep on the uh, 30,000 acres, as we need uh, 10 to 15 acres for every sheep. You can still get, like, a, like basically a sheep mustering experience. You can stay on the farms, can't you? Yes, well, you can't avoid it, really. It's a working sheep station, so... Um, you are staying on the farm. That's right, yes. Yeah, so it's all happening around you, yes. It's fantastic. You can also go walk into the national parks because the, the, the station is sort of nestled into the national park, isn't it? That's right. We're right on the boundary to the national park. And everyone that comes here, as you drive through, you, you get the feeling that the Flinders is a very special place. The youngest uh, part of the range uh, in this area is 550 million years old. Uh, it goes back to about 650 million years old. at Rawnsley Park described tour guide Tim Tyler as the super guru of all tour guides. If he doesn't know it, it's simply not worth knowing. So Rawnsley Park is on the other side of that ridge. That's right, on the other side of Wilpena Pound. 
it's wonderful when you come to visit here to get right under the skin of the area and find out what it's all about. It's good to, to go for a tour with a guide who can tell you what, why this country is so beautiful, where all these formations come from. We've made our way into Bunyaroo Gorge and 600 million years ago, these were tidal flats. And you can see the sand ripples that the water has eroded into the floor of the ocean, still here in the rock today. How cool. So you would get flash floods through here? Yes, after about uh, an inch or two of rain, uh, all of the gorges would be full and flowing. Uh, all the roads would be closed. Um, but it only lasts for a few hours or maybe a day or two, and then the water's gone. See the debris that's left, uh, left by the water? Out here, you get a great feeling for how massive our country is. But you will still occasionally bump into other tourists with other tour guides on other tours. I'm with Peter and Pam, and you guys are doing Derek's four-wheel drive tour of the pound. Yesterday, half-day tour mm -hmm. with Derek, and today, an all-day tour with him. And uh, it's been a, a, a very uh, interesting and uh, illuminating, and not his knowledge of the <laughs> local countryside and the mountains and how everything has formed here. Okay. Can you explain to me what the pound is? <laughs> well, the pound is an enclosure. Yes. So it's an enclosure of um, mountains around a, a hollow. And you've got to remember that these are the oldest mountains in the world. Which, oh, wow, well, that's wow. true. It How makes, it makes me feel young. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everyone to come here. Yeah, if you loved place. it, would you? We are definitely. And what is the thing that you found most breathtaking in the area for you guys, which, which is a, the unforgettable piece? The, the scenery. Mm. The scenery. Silence you know, the, for the me. silence. Oh, let's give them a taste. South of Ronsley Park, en route to Adelaide, you will drive through the Clare Valley. But don't just drive through, you have to stop. Tim, do you know what? I wouldn't mind some fish and chips. Well, unfortunately, you're going to have to settle for the parma. Chicken parma. Parma time! Now, it must be pretty impressive if it's on the kids' menu as well as the adults' menu. Wow. And the kids do love this menu. We're, of course, at the Bentley's Hotel here in Clare Valley. And it's just beautiful. The, the surroundings are really nice. It's lunchtime and it's packed. Yeah. Everyone's here for a chicken parma. We're not sharing today. We've got one each. Like, one it's each. very special. I know. Oh, a bit of pepper. Oh, well, I'm going to pepper it up. Now, they do more than just one sort of parma, don't they? They do like a, a, a chicken schnitzel and you can basically order your own topping. Yeah, you can get a parma or you can get Hawaiian, okay. mushroom. Oh, yeah. Tim, it's got ham. The chefs have got their own special sauce on there. What do you think, Brookie? Oh, yeah. It's a good one. Fresh chicken that's really tender. It's got ham, special sauce, plenty of cheese. Oh, I reckon it's, it's actually a little bit spicy of all things. Did you find it spicy? Chef won't give away the secret. The secret. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Fair enough. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Always waiting for Tim. Oh, you ready? Yeah. Set. Go. Read him and wait. Welcome back to Discover Down Under. From the central southeast sec sec no, it's the south central eastern section of It's the central eastern section of Sa oh, oh look, it's just the bit near the Flinders Ranges. To be exact, Tim, I'm just outside Clare in the historic Martindale Hall, and it is breathtaking. to walk in and see the staircase. I feel like I should be in a ball gown and just ready to party the night away. 
Thank you, Brooke. That's what we do here. There's the physical history, but there's also the social history. And it's always been a house where people have come and been entertained, had beautiful meals, maybe drank a little bit too much, and then climb upstairs and go to bed. So when was it built? It was built in 1879, and it took just under two years to actually build. It was built by a 21-year-old man called Edmund Bowman to entice his fiancée to come out from England, but she never came and broke his heart. What? So how many people have lived here over the years? Well, really, there's just been two families. The first family was the Bowman family, and the second family is a very, very famous family in South Australia called the Mortlocks. It was the very first billiard table to come to Australia for a turnball system in it. What? Now even the lights are unique. I know, they're fantastic. Originally the whole house was lit by gas and they actually used acetylene, so it's quite explosive. <gasps> so we're very, very lucky that the hall's still here. So where are we heading to next? I think the next room we should have a look at the smoking room. But I'm not a smoker. It's OK, you can call it the trophy room oh, then. the trophy room. So, Brooke, this is the trophy room. Wow. This is great. I saw there's a flag there from the British Empire Games. Yes, there is. They were very, very uh, British, very, very loyal to the Empire. And you'll see most of the things in here are from around Sri Lanka and also India and around to Africa too. Now, what about the guns? Were they used on the property? The guns as such were used as a little bit, but some of them are American Civil War guns. There's also one particular rifle in there that's the only complete example of it in the Southern Hemisphere. Well, this is great. I think you could spend hours in here just looking at all of the little trinkets. You could, but the Clare Valley is famous wine country, and it would be a crime against nature not to visit a winery or two. Seven Hill Winery, for example, is just a short drive to the south of Clare Township, and a guided tour of this historic winery is the first item on the agenda. As you can see, these are very old vines. These vines here are about 140 years old. And all the staff, including the secretaries, the cleaners, the cooks, the priests, the brothers, yeah, all, all picked these grapes yeah. by hand. A visit to this winery is not only a terrific tourist experience, but it is also a truly spiritual encounter. There was two Jesuits came out as chaplain aboard ship, a Maximilian Klinkenstone and an Aloysius Cranawitter. So they settled in Clare and they planted their first vines in 1851. The single Spiegel's item of wine we make is the altar wine, which has three titles, altar wine, sacramental wine, and wine used for religious purposes. Okay. And we sell this to all denominations who use wine in their religious services. Brother John has been here since 1963, and as a past winemaker, he knows his way around a grape. Now, what's your favourite glass of wine? Well, in red, St Ignatius, which is a wine that I created when I was winemaker manager for 32 years. And then... Of course, he loves his own creation. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's God's creation, after all. That's the shrine, and that's known as Loyola's Shrine. So when was this built? So this was built in 1870, and it has never, ever fallen down. So it's held together just by the design and, and no, no mud, no water, no cement. Very special. Alas, the tour winds up at the cellar door. And don't feel guilty if you buy a few bottles. In fact, you'll be doing your part in helping to make the world a much better place. We have a mission in Pakistan, in India, and uh, East Timor. Recently, that uh, the Sama, you know, was 12 months old in Japan, the Jesuits would have sent funds to our fellow Jesuits into Japan to, to help them. Yep. And we run a soup kitchen in King's Cross in Sydney. Do you have many caravanners and campers coming through? At this time of the year, we say the grey nomads are on the move. <laughs> but 
according to some figures, uh, we see between 30 and 40,000 people per annum. <gasps> Thank you Thank for you. having Thank me. Thank you, Brooke. Yes. And, and, and to Peter. Yes. May and God bless you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Tim and I are enjoying the beauty and peacefulness of the Clare Valley. And you know, I am feeling a little mischievous. So... Hello, I'm Tim Smith and welcome to Tim's Tim Big Tim Things. Tim. This week, it's the Cornish miner in Kapunda. Check out his mallet and his mo. If you're approaching Clare from the north, You'll want to pass through the town and then pop out the other side. And there, on your right, the Discovery Holiday Park. Oh, they're all going to be waiting eagerly for your arrival. They're so happy to see you. Bee, this has to be one of the most beautiful and biggest parks I've ever been to. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. It's good to be in the countryside and uh, in the wine region as well. So it's, uh, it's got all the pluses going there. So many trees. Yeah, we have a lot of trees, over 400 trees here in the park. So um, it's it's kind of cool, you know, they uh, they keep everything nice and shady. And a lot of grass to mow. Yes, a lot of <laughs> grass, a lot of grass. But um, yeah, we've got a good old ride on little mower that we like to cruise around on. And you find most people will come to Clare because of the wine? Yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the reason is the wine region. Um, and they come up here, have a good time. Weddings, we have lots of weddings as well up here. We've got a lot of cabins. How it many? Is. We've got 30 cabins, and we're getting another uh, another 10 cabins later this year. Uh, we've got uh, 91 powered sites and about 60 unpowered, so we can get pretty full here. I mean, so what's the most popular time of the year? May is really popular time uh, with a gourmet weekend that happens up here in the valley. Uh, also June with long weekend, uh, the park is absolutely bursting at the seams. So you've got to book ahead? You do have to book ahead. Most people book about a year in advance really? for events. As soon as the dates are released, people book. Well, I think it would be popular because you've got a lot to offer, especially for the kids. We do, we do. We've got our new jumping pillow that we've uh, just had installed in the last few months and uh, the pool is also heated. So, uh, yeah, we get all the kids here and they love it. And there's also some uh, animals down there, kangaroos and emus and that, go and feed them, so it's really good. You can get a bag of animal feed from the park kiosk and do a bit of hand feeding. And when the sun goes down, grab a bit of human feed and head for the warmth. What better way to, to have wine and, and enjoy the big open fireplace that we have here too in the park? So. Well, I did check that out last night. I thought it was brilliant. That's oh, fantastic. So it was we, hard to get a spot, actually. Yes, <laughs> yeah, we, it's always a, always a pleaser, that one. What about those people that bring their bikes along? Yeah, well, uh, we've got the Riesling Trail right across the road from us. So it goes all the way down to Auburn, and then you can um, stop at all the wineries along the way. A lot of people bring their bikes, and we do hire bikes here in the park as well. OK. So we've got um, adult bikes, we've got kids' bikes, we've got everything here as well. Well, come and visit B. It's a yeah. great park. You'll love it. 